Hello everyone. Welcome to Code Spot. And today we are going to see how to create a slide show with the snowfall effect. Let's first start with the demo for this project. So as you can see there is this image slider on the background. The image changes every 5 seconds and you have the snowfall effect that accentuates the background. So we'll just see how to do this. So let me open the code editor. Here I'm using brackets as my code editor. I have already uh, uploaded four images, one for the heading and three background images. Now I'm going to create three files, index.html, style.css for the style sheet and script.js for adding JavaScript code. Now in the index.html, I will start with the basic HTML head and body tags. Inside the head tag, I will give the link to the style sheet and inside the body tag, I will link all the JavaScript files that we require. I'm going to give a link to the jQuery CDN as well and make sure it is in the version 1.11.3. Now I'm going to start with the image slider. So I'm going to enclose all of them inside the div class called website. And I'm going to include three images inside that. I'm going to give a class as slideshow and fade. Slideshow is for the basic styles and fade is for the fading effect during image transition. So now let's open up the browser and see if the images are displayed. So yeah, the images come one beneath the other. So let's go ahead and style them now. I'll start with the slideshow class which represent all the images. I'm going to set the position to absolute and I will set the top to zero, left to zero. When I open up the browser, you can see all the images get stacked up one after the other. All the images are positioned at the top left corner. Now let's move ahead and set the height and width for all the images. And when we open up the browser, the last image is displayed. The other two images are beneath the third image. Now we need to make the slideshow effect by going into scripts.js file. We need to add the JavaScript code to make it work. Here I'm using jQuery, so I'm going to start with document.ready function. And here I'm going to use window.onload function. So as soon as the window loads, as soon as our browser gets loaded, so for, for example, I'm going to give an alert statement here and I'm going to mention hello there. And if we go into the browser, we can see the alert message as soon as the browser is loaded. When I click OK, the browser gets loaded. So let's go ahead and remove that alert function. So here I'm going to create a function called slideshow. I'm going to store all the images in a variable called slides. And I would do that by using document.getElements by class name. So now slides will contain all the image elements with the class name slideshow. Now I'm going to loop through each and every image items and I'm going to set the display to none. And then one by one I'm going to display so it looks like an image slider. So let's set a variable for that. I'm going to use a variable called current slide and I would set it to zero. And here I'm going to increment that. And also we need to have a check here because uh, the current slide cannot exceed the image length. So I'm going to give that a condition and if that is true and I'm going to set, set the current slide back to zero. And then I'm going to set the current slide minus one, whatever the value is, the display property to block. So that that one image gets displayed and every time we call the function, the current slide gets incremented and it goes one, two, three and then back to one, two, three. So that is how the display works here. Oh, well, actually, the current slide must be set to 1. So it goes 1, 2, 3, and then back to 1, 2, 3. Now I'll use the set timeout function and call the slideshow function every 3 seconds. Now let's give a call to the slideshow function itself, save it, and then when we open up the browser, we can see the image gets changed every 3 seconds. Alright, now let's move on to the next step. We are going to add the title, description and the button. So to add this, I'm going to open up the index.html and I'm going to enclose all this inside a div class called website header. 
Inside that, I'm going to add the header image, a paragraph with a temporary dummy text, and a button. Alright, if you open up the browser, you cannot see any of this here because it is located all the way down. So we need to do the same positioning and set it ZNX to 2. So it will be appearing above these images. So let's go into the style.css and I'm going to set the website header position to absolute and ZNX property to 2. Now if you open up the browser, you can see them appearing on top of these images. Basically, the ZX CSS property set the Z order of the positioning element. So the elements with larger Z index property would overlap the ones with the smaller ones. So since the website header has a high Z index, it appears on top of all the images. Now let's go ahead and set the color as white for the font. Now since the text is not visible we need to reduce the brightness in the background so our text stands out to do that let's go and set the filter property for the brightness and set it to 0.7 for all the images now you can see our text is much more visible all right now let's go back to the website header and set the width to 700 pixels and I'll set the font size to 22 pixels now let's put all this in center of our website by setting the left to 50%. This will set the starting point of the text in the middle of the page. So we need to set the transform property to translate x minus 50%. Now we want the elements inside the website header to be aligned center. The heading and the buttons are not located in the center of the page. To do that, I'm going to set the website header display to flex. I'm going to use the flexbox property for this. And I'll set the flex direction to column. Now all we have to do is to go ahead and give the margin 0 auto for the elements. So I'll go and give a width as 300 pixels and I'll set the margin property to 0 auto. Going into the website header, I'm going to set the top property to 80 pixels. And now let's move on to the button. I'll start by giving it a width and height. I'll give the width as 200 pixels and height 70 pixels. I'm going to set the font size as 22 pixels, font weight bolder. And I'm going to set the color as white. Let's set the background color to transparent. I'll give it a border 2 pixels solid white color. And I'll set the margin 0 auto so it appears in the center. I'll set the cursor property to pointer so when we point to the button, a hand symbol appears. There you go, the button design is completed. Now it's time to add the final animation on the image transition. So in the image transition from one to another, we want a fading kind of transition so it's smooth. So to do that, let's use the dot fade class that I have given to all the images and set the animation name property to fade and animation duration to 1.5 seconds. Now let's define the fade animation by using add keyframes. I'm going to start from 0.4 opacity to opacity 1. So it's, it fades from 0.4 to complete 100% version. And now if you open up the browser and see, the image transition has a bit of an animation there. Now moving on to the best part, the snowfall effect. I'll start by giving the canvas tag and I'm going to give the ID as snow effect. Now we need the snow effect on top of everything. So let's go to CSS file 
and set the position to absolute top and left property to 0 and I'm going to set the Z index as 3 since the one with Z in, with the higher Z index property would appear on top of everything snow effect would appear on top of everything now now let's go to the script file and create the snowfall effect first I will get the canvas element using document or get element by ID snow effect and then I will get the context as 2d and store it in a variable called CDX I'll get the width of the complete browser by setting window dot inner width and set it to a variable called W so it's easier for us to access and then height h to window dot inner height now I'll set the canvas width to W and canvas height to h first I'm going to start with the number of particles I'll set it to 200 I want 200 snow particles on my screen and then I'm going to create a particles array I'm going to mention that as n dash particle stands for number of particles now I will loop through each and every one of particles and set x y and radius for each particles so I'm going to create an object in that I'm going to set the x value to a random value from 0 to w I'll set the y property from 0 to h any random number and radius would be a random number between 0 to 7 now I have stored the array this is not going to create any we need to draw the circles individually to create the snow so let's create a function called draw I'll start with clear rect this will create clear all the pixels on the canvas in a given rectangle Inside the clear rect function, we need to give the parameter value x, y, width and height values. Now let's use the begin path method to start a path. Now I'll look through each and every one of the particles. And for easier access, I'm going to set the individual particles to a variable called p. First off, we'll start with setting up the starting position using move to. And inside that we will define the x and y axis of the particles. Now we will draw each and every snow particles by using the ellipse property. As you can see when I am typing you can see the parameters here. x, y, radius x, radius y, rotation, start angle, end angle and the anti-clockwise which we will not be using it. The x and y would be the one that we have stored in the array. Radius x would be the one that is also in the array. Radius x would be some random number from 0 to the radius. I will set the rotation to 0, start angle 0 and the end angle would be in the top pipe. I'm not going to give any anti-rotation here so that's an optional attribute so I'm going to ignore that. Let's define the fill style for this ellipse. Now we'll use the fill method to close the path. At last, we need to call the draw method for this to execute. Now when we open up the browser, there is nothing. So let's go to the inspect element and check what is the mistake that we've done. Let's go to the console and the error is unexpected token on line 32. So let's go to line 32 on script.js and there is a mistake. I have given semicolon in the object properties. I do that quite often. I need to give comma and instead I've given semicolon. So let's quickly change that. So basically properties in an object must be separated by a comma, not a semicolon. It's an error. So now even after I've done that, there's no particles on display. So let's go to the index.html and check it. Let's go to the CSS file and I've given dot snow effect. Actually, it is the ID, so I need to change it to hash symbol. Now the Z index property works and the snow particles are displayed in our browser. But the snow particles aren't circular, so let's go to script.js and check it. 
inside the ellipse I've given maths.py actually it should be math.py into 2 for the circular effect and I'm also going to change the y radius so it would be bigger enough now when we open up the browser you can see the snow particles displayed perfectly fine you can play around with these values and have different sizes for the snow particles Now we need to do the snowfall effect so I'm going to create a new function for that called update. Inside the function I'm going to increase the horizontal value a little bit so for the snowfall is falling towards the right and I would also change the y value so it would fall down. Now when the snow particle hits the bottom of the browser we need to send it back up so I'm going to give a condition called p.y greater than the height which is the canvas height inside that I'm going to give all the conditions and now before that we need to define the variable p I forgot to do that now let's change the original values for the particles I'm going to set the x value to its previous value y would be minus 10 the top value and the radius is going to be the one that is already there now I'll call the update function inside the draw method, I forgot to record that. And using set interval, I'll call the draw method every 10 milliseconds. Now as you can see the snowfall is perfectly fine. Here it is going almost towards the right. To change that I'm going to just uh, change the x value here in the update function. I'm going to set it to a random number between 0 to the canvas width. And now if I open up the browser, you can see the snowfall effect is working perfectly fine. Now you can play around with this update function and draw function and create different snowfall effect falling from different directions. With that, the tutorial is completed. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know your comments in the comment section down below. I would love to hear them. And please subscribe to CodeSpot for more such videos. Thanks for watching.